Hey, everyone, for the first time, and if you're watching this episode again, hey, for a second time. George and Max coming at you from the Unqualified Film Bros podcast. We're going through the full MCU, talking about all the projects before the release of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Definitely a weird cadence to start this episode. Anyway, welcome back to the rewatch. So uh, we're getting into it. We're talking about the second big team-up movie of the MCU, Avenga Boys, Avengers Age of Ultron. It's a Brooklyn Nine-Nine reference for you. Uh, Avengers Age of Ultron. Max, this is definitely, you know, uh, of all the Avengers movies there are, this is definitely one of them. I don't have much more to say, so over to you. Yeah, it, it exists. You know, I think if we hadn't had avenger marvel's the avengers come out like what three years prior and then have such a strong run in between then essentially with winter soldier guardian guardians of the galaxy and then you know this probably would be a little bit higher in my ratings and rankings but it just it didn't really move the needle for me on any of the characters it didn't change my opinion of the existing ones um to be quite honest, I wasn't that interested in uh, Quicksilver um, or even Scarlet Witch to a certain extent. Um, I mean, obviously, that changes over the course of a couple of years, a few movies, a TV show. Um, so I'm not saying that all hope is lost and that opinions are set in stone, but it didn't give me a great first impression of some of the new characters and it didn't give me a great impression of some of the characters that I had known well and had grown accustomed to. And, you know, that's disappointing when you think about what Avengers Age of Ultron was meant to be. It's supposed to be kind of a glorious follow-up to um, the Avengers and it, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, this one... You can file it under disappointing, I think. There's no need to sugarcoat it. Uh, I think Joss Whedon was the obvious choice to come in and direct after how great The Avengers was. Uh, but this film... You know, I, I said this about The Avengers. I'll say it about this one. I'm still not convinced I love the characterization in the, in the team-up movies yet of any of these these leads i mean you've got tony stark who i will admit is very good in this film i like his reaction to the vision that wanda shows him i like his you know character arc with creating ultron and then the quips he has in his interactions with the superbot um i like his di his dynamic with bruce banner in this one i think thor and Captain America are underused in this film. I think, you know, you set up the film with this battle outside of Strucker's base. You've got the group shot, you've got all of them interacting, you've got all of them working together. And then two of your big three are sort of pushed off to the side for most of the movie, or not most of the movie, but for large chunks of the movie, you know, you're focusing on Ultron, you're focusing on the Maximoffs, you're focusing on Tony Stark. Focusing on Clint Barton's mystery family. Yeah. Um, and then you get the uh, the will they or won't they Ross and Rachel subplot of Bruce Banner and Natasha Romanoff. One, not needed at all. What's the purpose of the romance other than for Banner to say, where can I go when I, where I'm not a threat? And to get a little bit more background on Natasha, which we got from the uh, first eight minutes of the Black Widow movie, and also we got from the flashback vision that Wanda gives her. Natasha Romanoff was a phenomenal character in Captain America the Winter Soldier, and now she's just reduced to, you know, I, I hate to say it, but archetype of woman getting hung up on man. Yeah, and, you know, I, I I think I'd be remiss without mentioning that it is Joss Whedon. Um, he does have 
yeah not a great reputation when it comes to handling um women and women characters in his films and just generally the treatment of actors on on set he's gotten a lot of fire um and allegations again made against him and so I, I guess we can't really be surprised given the you know numerous people coming from different projects it's not just the same people coming out and saying the same thing um and it's so trend. it's definitely a trend yeah and so unfortunate because avengers was a great film but you sort of see that in that film too but especially in this one natasha is coming off of one of her best characterizations um maybe not performances but for sure characterizations in captain america the winter soldier and she's relegated to a really unnecessary love interest um and doesn't really have much of a role which is unfortunate because we know what she can do we know she's great how important she is to holding the team together we know how important she is in you know extracting information from characters from the villains um and just all around being awesome and in age of ultron we get essentially none of that oh, character development as much as people like to like to crap all over steve rogers character decisions at the end of avengers <laughs> endgame you know what happens to the end of his character arc what happened to natasha romanoff's character arc yeah, but at all least that Steve development Rogers is, is consistent, right? It's consistent, He's consistent and, in wanting to be with Peggy, but right. And I know. disagree with the narrative from many fans that his character development was thrown out the window. There, Natasha's is completely thrown out the window here. It's non-existent. She doesn't have any character in this film. And then all of a sudden, in Civil War, her next appearance, she's sort of back to being who she was in she's, The Winter Soldier. She's back to being a badass. She's back yeah. to being the Natasha that we know and love. Exactly. And, and I think a lot of times it gets chalked up to the fact that, oh, this is a team up movie and, you know, it's the Avengers and it but makes still, sense that got, a non super powered individual is going to get pushed off to the side. And yet she doesn't get pushed off to the side in Civil War. So where's your explanation for that? You've got Baron Strucker saying in the beginning of the film, concentrate fire on the weak ones. First of all, why do the Avengers have weak ones? They shouldn't. <laughs> but. Natasha Romanoff is, again, almost a, I would say, at least a secondary character, almost a tertiary character in this film. She gets locked up and taken prisoner by Ultron in the third act, you know. But then you've got Clint Barton, who's essentially the focus of the entire second act of the film. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to his farm, you're meeting his family, you're seeing what his life is like. You're seeing how important a role he plays to the Avengers. And he's the one who gets shot in the opening act. So I, I think I want to get into the positives because there are a lot of positives in this film. Um, but there are, you know, we have to start with the negatives because this film is disappointing with everything that we've seen in phase two and everything that we've seen with the Avengers. Um, but in terms of positives, you know, we get Wanda Maximoff, we get Vision. We get Ultron, great performance by James Spader. Is this film worth taking all the bad to get that good? No. Okay. Um, and Here's where I would we disagree. Say, and I would say no because I think at this point it's okay at this point in the MCU, I think it's okay for us as audience members and fans to expect something, right? Whether it's, um, you know, a major plot line to develop, whether it's character development or, you know, something else. And I just feel like there were way too many missed opportunities in this film. And I'm not saying that there wasn't anything important that happened, because of course there was. But what I mean by my original point is that I, I just think that there was stuff missing and that the film focused on some of the wrong things. 
as such, the Natasha and Bruce romance being sort of top of mind, right? Like, I don't think that that was necessary at all. And you could have cut probably almost five or six minutes or repurposed five or six minutes of the runtime into developing something else. Repurpose 15, 20 minutes of the runtime with that B plot. Yeah, probably, probably more. But, you know, significant portion of the film. Um, and I think that's where I come down on this. But I'm curious to hear where you you're differing yeah um like we said with with a couple of the last videos that we've done a couple of last rewatches we've done what it comes down to for me about the mcu is rewatchability outside of a rewatch mm -hmm. like i would say um avengers Age of ultron is rewatchable outside of a rewatch team up movies are always fun no matter mm -hmm. the quality and you get three I'll, I'll say it, four great new characters here. I love the introduction of Paul Bettany as Vision. I think that, that that creation scene and then his role in the final battle is really, really cool. You get two characters with a lot of depth, obviously that you haven't seen a lot of it yet in Wanda and Pietro Maximoff. But again, they're fun additions to the team in terms of superpowers. You get, yeah. you know, yeah. he's fast and she's weird, but it's so much more than that. And then I disagree entirely with the choice to have Ultron be the villain of the second Avengers movie when you've got Loki as the villain of the first and Thanos as the, uh, the villain of the third and fourth. Ultron honestly feels a little bit like a side quest considering he doesn't have anything, he doesn't have anything to do with the Infinity Stones. But also, still, the fact that Ultron in the comics is so much more powerful than, you know, what he was portrayed as, and we see it in What If, sort of what the potential is for Ultron in terms of power. But for a movie called Age of Ultron, yeah. That said, James Spader is freaking great in yeah. this role, and you know, I wish I had seen this movie before I watched The Office, because all I really heard <laughs> was Robert California, but you know. I don't love this movie. It's obscenely long for, you know, the pacing that it, it tries to, you know, the, the ground it tries to cover. Age of Ultron, more like two weeks of Ultron. But, you know, it, it remains rewatchable, I think, is the bottom line. So what do you think your ranking and rating would be? And I have a feeling mine are going to be higher than yours. Yeah, um, they might be. Uh... It's really, it's pretty low for me. It's, um, I'm giving it a, tw I'm giving it, uh, I'm putting it in the 27th slot out of 32 films or projects, sorry. Um, again, I, I don't dislike it, but I just think that there was so much waste in the film in terms of potential and um, storylines that I think weren't fleshed out properly or, in the best way um and so i have to give it a pretty low ranking and and the rating will reflect that i'm giving it a 70 so uh, as low a c minus as i can give it um so yeah I, I mean it's 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 fine but it it's not i'm not that excited about watching this even outside of a rewatch to be quite honest yeah it's never the favorite part of any full rewatch it's something that you know if it's on tv and i got you know three hours to kill for allowing for commercials and all that yeah why not watch age of ultron it's something that you know i can come back to and like i said in the last few minutes it's something that i can find at least some things to enjoy you know danny elfman does the score for this one instead of alan silvestri but he does a really good take on the Avengers themes and new themes for new characters. So there are positives in Avengers 8 of Ultron. So uh, that said, I was right in that my rankings will be higher than yours. I'm going to put it 23rd in the MCU. It's bottom 10, but only just. I think you, you can say top 10 only just, but... 
bottom 10 only just it's it's not it's not my favorite but it's definitely not my least favorite um and then as for a zero to 100 score it's in that c range as well um where you gave it a c minus i'm going to give it middle range c plus i'm going to go 78 out of 100 i just think that yes it has good produ production value yes it is this great cast no it doesn't have flaws that can be just simply brushed aside like natasha romanoff was brushed to the side so uh there's my little quip for the end there we want to know what you think about avengers age of ultron what you think about its role in the mcu its place in your rewatches its rank in the mcu uh and maybe a zero to 100 score we haven't asked for one of those yet so uh let us know what you think about this very polarizing movie. We will see you tomorrow to talk about Paul Rudd's debut in the MCU. And of course, friend of the pod, Michael Douglas. We will uh, see you tomorrow with Ant-Man. Have a good night, everyone. Good night.